congratulations, first off. Thanks. What an incredible accomplishment. You're one of very few people that can say I, in the climbing space, that can say I am an Olympian. Obviously capable of standing on top of the podium if everything aligns and you get the perfect day and are able to express your capabilities when it matters at that event. And I'm curious, are you able to appreciate what you accomplished getting to and competing in Tokyo and coming in 11th? Or is there any disappointment mixed in? Honestly, it's still kind of hard to talk about. I think like there was so much build up to it. And given the year off, we were kind of really able to um, hone in on weaknesses and focus on things that we thought we could do better at and really think about goals for like a really long time. Uh, being qualified for the Olympics for a year and a half is a really unique experience and a really stressful one. Uh, <laughs> as cool as it also was, like it was one of the coolest times of my life, but also one of the most stressful for sure. Especially with the changes that kind of setting style went through this last year and stuff like that. I think preparations got like really difficult. And kind of one of the other ways I, I guess I process um, competitions results and stuff like that is that every competition is a totally new competition. You know, one, say the Salt Lake City Bouldering World Cup having climbs that were really bad for my back in finals doesn't mean that the Olympics were going to have climbs that were bad for my back. You know, like they're not correlated, I guess, necessarily. It's a completely new slate. And so that's like the mindset that I was going into at each competition. And so going into the Olympics, I was like, all right, like, I've prepared as well as I can. Like I've worked on these weaknesses so much, got really good at speed climbing, accomplished a lot of goals on uh, both um, lead, bouldering and speed, like really focused on being a really good all arounder. And I think my strategy was slightly off. Um, for the girls, you really needed to have a really high result in one discipline in order to mm. make finals. Um, like there was somebody, I think who even got like fifth, fifth, like fifth, fifth, seventh or something. And she didn't make it to finals because you really needed that like a one, two or three. Um, in order to like make finals. And so I really focused on being good all around and like getting a good result in speed, a good result in bouldering and a good result in lead or like being good at all three instead of being like the best at one. And I think that would have been really hard to do for speed, especially because we had so many speed specialists. Mm. So even though I was really good at speed climbing compared to a lot of the other combined athletes, um, we had, I think five speed specialists. So the best that I was going to do was going to be sixth in speed. So I think looking back, I would have changed my strategy slightly and probably not focused on speed quite so much and maybe focused a lot more on my lead or bouldering, um, even though, because I was just spread pretty thin between the three. So I, I do feel like I was in very good shape for all of them, but just not in like peak shape for one of them, um, yeah. which maybe would have been the better strategy, I guess. And yeah, doing that for bouldering is risky because it is kind of a dice roll, especially for me with the style of moves that they've been setting this year. Kind of two of the moves that I was hoping would never, would not show up at the Olympics showed up like twice in the bouldering round and once on the lead on the lead route so like i was just kind of crossing my fingers and like knew that like hoping for the best on that one can you describe it what was it that you saw that gave yeah you that so feeling? this move that has been like really popular this year has been putting presses on overhangs so like you've got like a big hold that's maybe on a volume but you're on an overhang so maybe it's like a 30 degree overhang um and then you have a foot over to the right and you have to mantle up on this hold on the overhang and like grab a hold above you and what's really hard about that is if it's on an overhang, especially in order to keep your body into the wall so that you don't fall out, like keep your um, your butt into the wall, you need to arch your back. Uh -huh. and then to grab a hold behind you, you have to also twist. And then usually what you have to do from there is hand foot match to do the next move. And so bending and twisting is already hard for me. And then as soon as I have to put my foot up, I uh, I get really stuck. Yeah, and actually something I am, that I found out, I'm pretty sure, um, is that I am also the first Olympian to ever have a spinal fusion. So um, at least as large of a spinal fusion that I have. I know there's a couple people who had scoliosis and then got a fusion after they competed at the Olympics. How much better did you get from this year or more, however long it was, of targeted prep for the Olympics? I think I became less specialized. So I, I think if you ask me about bouldering only, I definitely got better at competition style boulders, but I feel weaker on like the style that I was really good at before. Mm. Cause it used to be that I think I was like one of the best at the style that I was best at, which is like kind of that more straightforward, hard pulling stuff. And so like, I kind of had to sacrifice some of my like strengths in order to work on these weaknesses. And I'm not sure if that was the right strategy or not, but I do think I got a lot better at some of these movements that I was really bad at and just general movement on the wall. I think I got a lot better at. I've noticed you talking about your back more in the last couple of years, I assume with the Olympics. And 
I mean, it's badass. Like, to, you know, what you've accomplished with the context of having a fused spine is different than if you hadn't had a fused spine. It's, it's really inspiring. Has it been helpful to talk more openly about it? And I'm curious if it ever, if that label, you know, having a disability, can that ever hold you back? I kind of go back and forth on that. So like Josh, my coach, like tries to not let me use it as an excuse very often, mm. um, you know, which can be really helpful, but also kind of frustrating, you know? So I think it's good. Like, I think it's a really good d dynamic to have us both have like different viewpoints on it. So he's looking at it like you have a thing to do and you need to do it, like no matter what. doesn't matter if your back is fused, doesn't matter, like whatever. Like this is your climb, you gotta try it, you know? Uh, and like, I'm looking at it like, man, this climb is gonna be so hard for me. Like has this move on it like blah 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 and so having kind of some like that alternate voice to to push me to try it anyway is like really really helpful how are you feeling about the 2024 olympics it's so funny you get off the wall at um in tokyo and you sit behind the wall for five minutes and then they take you immediately to a media tent and you are like process you just finished you <laughs> just finished competing at the olympics right like you're you have your bib on and you immediately go into this media tent and they're like, 2024, what are your thoughts? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I just like fell off this lead climb. <laughs> Give me a sec. Um, and <laughs> uh, then they asked you about like, why, what, how do you feel about your family not being here? And I was like, it's, it's okay. <laughs> um, uh, and so like, I mean, you know, obviously like huge goal competing at the Olympics. Uh, you know, another bigger goal would be meddling at the Olympics. Um, the new format, I think, is going to be really interesting. I'm on a lot of committees within USA Climbing and the IFSC. Like I'm on the board of USA Climbing, uh, on the athlete commission for the IFSC, for the Pan Am, I, uh, for the Pan American um, Commission too, and all these different things. And so I hear a lot of the behind the scenes about how scoring will work and how they're debating how changing it and stuff like that. Basically, it's going to favor lead climbing. Uh, hmm. Like the new format, it's basically impossible to evenly uh, weight bouldering and lead with the way that they want to score it huh. uh, they basically they want it to be less complicated so they don't want to involve any sort of multiplication and stuff like that so it wants to be simple, simple addition and kind of if you watch a league comp most people top or get near the top and we've all watched a final where only one person tops one boulder you know so mm. <laughs> uh making them even is gonna be really difficult with some sort of addition and so I, I'm just really intrigued to see how this new format works first of all um but I am really still psyched on competing uh, like I said, I'm a little burnt out right now, uh, but I still have a lot of goals that I feel like I haven't accomplished, even though I did accomplish that huge goal of going to the Olympics. So um, we'll see what happens, but uh, I am still psyched. So. <laughs>